So you can print out your board one-to-one -one and then use that as a template. You can insert it into your case or you can compare it with the board you're trying to match. And so I tried to match it up and my holes aren't cooperating. They're not lining up. All right, there's something amiss. Uh, better, better get my rule and try to figure out. Uh, maybe I didn't measure it right the first time. So uh, let me try a, oh, let me try a, um, a uh, inches instead of uh, millimeters. And yep, this board was laid out in inches, decimal inches. So we need to go back into uh, KiCad and put some better numbers in, not millimeter approximations, but probably the numbers that were used the first time. All right, so I need to change a few things here. We want to redraw, not redraw, but move some of the coordinates of this thing into inches. It's now in millimeters. You can see that over here. You can choose millimeters, mils, and inches, okay? We need to change that to inches, but before we do that, I want to do something. And that is, if you go down here at the bottom, you can see the coordinate you're at. So right now, I just chose this point to be uh, 100, 100 to make things easy because zero starts up here. This is where zero is, okay? And wouldn't it be nice if zero was right there and then I can scale inches from there? So let's do that. Um, we can do two different things. Um, the first thing we can do is down here, it says place grid, uh, place grid origin point. And I'm gonna say, I want the grid origin point to be right there. And makes this little symbol there. So now we have a grid origin. Now that's used for when you create a drill drawing or the Gerber files. It will, it, externally to this program, it will treat that as zero. But we're still displaying 100, 100 for that point, okay? Even though I've set it to zero. And that's because there's a global coordinate system and a local coordinate system. So um, you get to that over here at the grid so if you right click on this grid symbol and say edit grids, there's a bunch of stuff here in the grids, the size and everything. But if you come here to origins and axes, it says display. Right now it's displaying the page origin and we want to display the grid origin. So if we do that, now if we hover our mouse over this thing, it's showing zero at the bottom, okay? So that's what we want. So we are ready to go to the next step, which is put it into inches, so boom. We're now in inches, okay? And our zero, zero, though, should be right. And it is. Okay, so now what we need to do is do like we did before. We need to change a whole bunch of things, okay? So uh, we know these holes here should be uh, 150 mils in. And... Um, Right now they are 137.79, yeah. So we want to change that. I think what we're gonna need to do though is grab the entire thing first. Uh, let's see here, if we grab that whole thing and we lock it and then we can move it to 150 and 150. Yeah, there we go. So that's where it should be. All right, so let's go over to the next one here. Let's get him and we'll lock him. Now he should be, um, let's see here. I need to measure my uh, measure my board while we're talking. It is a 1.4, see, it has a center of 1.6. Okay, so it should be, oops should be 1.6 and 0.5. So that's really where that hole should be. All right. So what you used to see what I'm doing here, I'm going to move the holes to where they should be. And then I'm gonna move the outlines uh, in inches. The, the outline should be 1.7 inches square. So I'll do that off camera. All right, well, there we go. Everything is now where it's supposed to be. I, I moved the pads to where they're supposed to be. So now our 
now our routing is a bit off, so we'll need to we'll need to move things a bit here. Uh, we'll get rid of that trace, and we'll get rid of that trace, and we'll slide things down to make them look nice. So let's do that now. Let's grab this, and let's bring it down to about. Let's see. I want to leave some little bit of room over on this side, so I'm going to bring it over to who? I'm going to bring it over to there. And then we can add some more, put some trace back in it just to visualize. All right, so that's that's looking better. Now, um, I think from last video, you may have noticed that I shifted the upper ground plane. The bottom ground plane is still full, but the upper ground plane moved off because I want these traces to be microstrip. If you have them embedded into the copper uh, pore, then they become, um, what is it, collinear? Co I forget, some name for it. Anyway, there's extra uh, capacitance to ground and it messes up your impedance length. So, um, I'm going to have that open on the bottom, but I still needed um, I still needed the copper pour up here for two reasons. One is these capacitors need it; they need it because it's surface mount. And the other is I want this tab to be on ground, so we actually can oops we actually can slide this down a bit. Let's move it down to about there, and now. Um, Now it's picking up, picking up uh, this ground here for copper. Um, I think what we want to do is we want to have a little bit of stitched ground over here too. So let's talk about stitching. Um, so uh, the ground path will be this layer. So this sheet of copper here on uh, on the top layer has to go back to this. Uh, connection here, this screw. And we want both top and bottom actually to be connected because that bottom layer will probably have a better ground than the top layer. So we can do stitching. We do that by grabbing a via and then just start putting them in. So if we want to have uh, if we want to have some some vias over here, we can just kind of stitch them in. Let's make it a little bit pretty here. Yeah, let's do Let's do this. I don't know. You can do what you want. Doesn't really matter. Um, we can come over here to this one, stitch him in. This is just oops. This is just adding vias to ground, um, and uh, we can do it around around this one as well. We probably want some nice uh, resistance to ground down here. I'll go ahead and put one there. Um, and I don't exactly like where that one is. So I can click on him and move him over. Okay, fine. Um, and that one looks a bit goofy too. Let's move him over. There we go. All right. So we can we can do more stitching if you think it's required. You can put a stitch along here. Um, just add vias. Um, just just stick them in where you want them. And. Uh, I won't go through and put all the stitches in on video here, but you you get the idea. You can put you can put these stitches in everywhere. All right. But I am worried a bit about this ground, so I would like like a a stitch right here in the center, but that's where the uh, that's where the solder is going to be. So let me let me put in a track here. Let's uh, let me put in a size track. Let's put in a. Uh, Let's say a 20 mil track. Let's do that. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's a good size. So what I want to do here is I'm going to add a trace. Okay. Let's see here. Zoom down here. I'm going to add a trace. I'm going to go here to where ground would be. And uh, I'm going to hit the v, v button, which says I'm going to be putting a via in. And then when I stitch this down, it's automatically connected it to ground. So, so we'll have a local ground here for, uh, for that as well. So I like that idea. I think those are far enough away that they won't interfere. Um, 
We could cut them back if we needed to, but I think this is fine the way it is. All right. Uh, things are looking good. Let's do a 3D view again. See how we're doing here. Things are looking good on that. You can see the you can see the stitch. You can see the stitching in there now. Um, and this little this little stitch here. I think that will be good. All right. 